welcome to the fall performance of the Pitt Greensburg Chorale and Chamber Singers Christmas Time is Here. We are delighted that you have come to join us here for our concert tonight, which celebrates this holiday season with music both contemporary and classic. We are especially excited to be bringing Handel's celebrated Messiah to this hall for the first time, and to be singing with so many of Western Pennsylvania's finest artists. Chamber Singers opened our performance with a setting of O Manu Mysterium, O Great Mystery, one of the most important Latin Christmas texts. Composers from Victoria to Blink and from Bird to Lauritsen have created notable choral arrangements of this verse. This version was by mid-Renaissance Flemish composer Adrian Willard, an internationally recognized composer and teacher of the 16th century. Most significantly, he held the prestigious position of Maestro di Capella, or Master of Music, at St. Mark's in Venice for 35 years until his death in 1652. His O Manu displays the artful polyphonic style of his era, with each new line of text receiving its own melodic idea, voice parts crossing in the ranges, and modes shifting subtly as the melodic lines wind their paths around each other. <laughs> Corral now turns to two of the stunning works of Eric Whitaker, whose music in the last 15 to 20 years has overtaken the choral world. Through his choir, the Eric Whitaker Singers, and also through global collaborative performances of virtual choirs. Eric Whitaker's signature has been his creation of exquisite harmonies and thick layers of voices, and Lux Rumque exhibits this in spades, often with only the barest of steps that each voice takes, with, from simple triads he creates shimmer shimmering sounds of dissonant clustered chords as brilliant and, and beautiful as they are mysterious. Listen for this right from the first chord as Corral sings of light, or lutes, and hear its colors glisten before you. And Glow was written in collaboration with Disney for their show World of Color Winter Dreams, which performed at Disney California Adventure Park in 2013. As with Whitaker's previous virtual choir projects, including Luke Sarumpe, the very first, over 1,000 singers from around the world recorded its individual vocal lines, which Whitaker mixed together from a, for a completely digital performance. Glow relies less on the density of choral voices, remaining four voice throughout, but it maintains Whitaker's commitment to evocative harmonies as it imagines a sparrow song greeting the warm glow of winter snow. These are the works of Eric Whitaker. <coughs>
It's got the melody you know, all the words you've sung a thousand times, but set in an asymmetrical meter that will forever shape how you feel it. Once you have it, it's hard to hear it the old way anymore. We in Corral will for sure be looking forward to baffling holiday caroling all across Pennsylvania. So try to follow us in merry measure. Sing along if you dare. <laughs>
moment, we're going to take our intermission but before, and then set for Messiah. Give about 10 minutes before we resume the second half of our program. But I'd like to take a moment now uh, to recognize one of our chorale members who has reached uh, her semester of graduation. It's one of my great honors and privileges to be able to celebrate in the achievement that we are all here for, that all of these great students are here for, which is to eventually get to the finish line and graduate with degree. And this semester, we are honoring our chorale president and soloist in the last piece, uh, Miss Alyssa McDonald. <laughs> of speaking of about Alyssa, whom I have known now for a very long time, is that Alyssa keeps coming back. <laughs> I first met Alyssa in the fall of 2012, auditioning for Corral. Uh, she came out, she was, she was very quiet, she was shy, she couldn't really let her voice get much above a deep pitch, but it was so clear that she had music training and had that music ear. She was so accurate in what she did. I said, oh, I can't wait to have you in Corral, so come, please join us. And, she, and, and uh, even though she seemed so nervous in that one, she came back to that next rehearsal and she began her, uh, her career here. Her freshman year, she got a chance to tour. In fact, I think is the uh, one remaining member singing today, uh, was on our tour back in 2013, though some of our uh, tour uh, folks are in the audience this evening. We had a great time. Didn't have to convince her at all to come back. She was coming right back after that because we had such a good time. Uh, she declared a music minor and wanted to begin to take uh, a number of uh, a number of different classes, uh, often studying with me and in our, our music program. She was one of the very first uh, to start taking lessons in our voice program, and it is through there that her her voice and her musicality really began to uh, began to blossom. Became a soprano. You can even catch her next week uh, at the uh, voice and piano recital uh, next Wednesday, where she will be uh, singing proudly. And it's been really amazing and wonderful to watch her fulfill her musical potential and find so much joy in being in, in doing it. Um, and so she kept coming back. More classes, more lessons. Let's keep doing this. And as part of her music minor, she decided to take conducting with me. And she kept coming back despite um, a near trip to the injured reserve that she took in class. Uh, there, uh, I, we were working on conducting technique. I have to get away from the microphone. Working on conducting technique, and I can't get her to use the space very much. So I come behind her and say, may I run you for a moment? And I put my hand on uh, her shoulder, and I hold her arm like this, and I say, I want you to use this space like this. <laughs> forgetting that I am somewhat taller than Alyssa is. <laughs> she let out a little yelp, um, uh, but despite this flagrant foul, she kept coming back, <laughs> wanted to continue and, and, uh, uh, and sing some more. Um, she has such dedication and such joy for singing with this group. Uh, I was very pleased and proud when she accepted to become our chorale president in this last year and became our, uh, our, our, uh, our, our featured representative. Uh, and she's served in many uh, capacities but uh, is uh, retiring as, as president now. Um, and I might even say I'd like to have you come back and do that, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep talking about that. Um, there was even a semester where she came up to me, she said, I have a class conflict. It's a class I have to take for my major in information science, and I absolutely must take it. I said, is it offered in Oakland? She said, it's offered in Oakland. So she began trekking out two, three times a week to that class just so she could hurry back and be here. She kept coming back. And even the university said, you may graduate in eight semesters. And she said, no, I'm having so much fun in studying information science with computer science and a music minor, plus all the chorale I'm doing and voice lessons. I want to fulfill all of this, which makes her the longest tenured member of chorale in my time here. This is her ninth semester singing. <laughs> On January 3rd, we will be back in this space to start our rehearsals, and for the first time in the last four and a half years, Alyssa won't be coming back because she will have graduated. She will have uh, uh, moved on to, to her next endeavors, but uh, because she will have earned her degree, uh, and she's ready to go on to the next thing. But I have been so proud 
uh, to have been your guide uh, in a life that I know now will forever be filled with music. What you brought here before you allowed to flower and bloom. I know that we'll probably see you back for the concert in, uh, in, in April. We'll see you back uh, uh, many times, but it's now time to be able to step forward proudly with all that you achieved. And we are, and we are so proud that you have done so. Please join me in congratulating Alyssa McDonald.
Oh, 